we moved to the city, my father got a job at the screw works where they made screws, but he died at his machine. He dozed off, fell into the threader, and was threaded to death. And when they found him, he was unrecognizable because his body was covered with ridges. He had a point at one end and a slot at the top of his head. He was buried on the hottest day of the year. After the funeral, at the age of 10, I got a job at the electricity plant. I lit the candles. Yes, they sold all the electricity they made, so they had no electricity left for their own power. But they were ashamed and took out all the windows. This way, no one would know there was no electricity in the electricity factory, and the employees could work by candlelight in peace. station. One night, a man drove in backwards because his headlights were broken. He'd been driving by the light of his taillights all the way from Phoenix for hundreds of miles. But when he tried to get out of the car, his neck was so stiff he couldn't turn his head around, and he was still looking over his right shoulder. A minute later, another man drove in, in a car with only two front tires. The rear fender scraping along the pavement made a terrible noise. He told me he'd had two flats on the same day three months ago and hadn't gotten around to changing them. Luckily, he had front wheel drive. It wasn't too bad, except the car was tilted back and he had a hard time seeing over the hood. Well, these two men had an accident in the filling station and they both got out of their cars. But the man with a stiff neck could only talk with his back turned to the other man, looking over his shoulder at him. And the other man was insulted and was screaming at the top of his lungs because the scraping noise of the fender over months of driving had caused him to lose almost all of his hearing. And the man who'd driven backwards couldn't understand why he was screaming at him. Actually, it was just a small scrape, almost no damage. They ended up driving off together in the same car. A few years later, they sent me an invitation to the opening of their beauty salon in Tangiers. I was lost on an elevator. All the floors were the same. Then I realized the elevator was moving horizontally. So I tried another elevator, the express. But it just got me more lost faster. People kept getting on and getting off. They were all wearing green gauze over their heads and were smoking ice cream cones. I said, please let me off at 39th Street. And the conductor said, this is 35th Street. You'll have to walk three blocks and take the escalator. But when I got to the escalator, it was just a phone booth. So I made a call. I called my father. I said, hello, 
I'm lost on 39th Street looking for an escalator and I can't find it anywhere. And he said, I'll be right there. And there he was. And the phone booth started moving forward very slowly with my father and I in it, and I didn't know where it was going or why. And he said, don't be afraid. This phone booth will take us home. And I said, but we have no home. And he said, we live on the eighth floor, apartment Y. And I said, why? And he said, yes. Well, my father has always smoked Chesterfields. And right in the middle of this small, unventilated phone booth, he lit up an entire pack. He put the entire pack in his mouth and started to smoke. And I said, you're smoking a whole pack of Chesterfields. And he said, yes, I smoke a pack a day. And I said, a whole pack? Yes, I can't give it up.
measure each and every part. How can I tell you how much I love you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
deserve it? Yeah, you do. I didn't ask for it. Yes, you did. I don't want it. Well, that's the truth. I'm lost. No, you're not. I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. In other words, until you finally say, there's some tweaking that I could do that would get me the results more that I want, then we don't want to lose you in this by getting too many words out here. Let's bring it back to the simplest of things. Anytime you feel like you need to offer more effort, it's because of the push and pull you've got going on within you. And that hasn't got anything to do with anything else. And the push and pull means I've got beliefs that I am usually expressing with my words that are contrary to what I'm attracting. And I want my words to count for something. I want my kids to know I love them when I'm not acting like it. I want them to do what I tell them to do when they're not ever going to do that. I want to be respected. Even if I'm disrespectful. I want my demands and my certainty. I want my deliberate creation to count. We don't blame you. You just got to understand what your point of attraction really is. So if you can walk out of here just knowing today that You've been offering some beliefs that are contrary to what you want, and that's why it's wonky, and that the effort factor isn't all these hard things that you think it is. It's just changing the subject, lightening up, acknowledging that your inner being loves you. You're looking for proof. You're trying to validate your worthiness. So, so let's go right there. Almost everything I do overtly with words and behavior, action, interaction with others is to prove worthiness when I'm already worthy. Oh, what an unnecessary struggle. I'm already worthy, but I don't believe I'm worthy. So even though I'm worthy, I just keep creating situations in order to get myself to focus upon the fact that I already am that.
Thank you.
the coolest thing and everybody, you know, then the 80s people were hating on the hippies. Like, that, it's just, it's just, we're just living in a time where there's just a major transition going on. It just feels a little weird, but I'm telling you, it's kind of awesome. I think there's less gatekeepers now, and so it's watering down sort of like the music that people who aren't true music fans get to listen to as okay. much. So you're, ex- you're, ex- you're, you're, you're really discussing the science of it? But it's just called change. Everything you're talking about is just change. You're explaining why things happen. I'm done. I'm done. Sorry. I'm done. Agenda against the disenfranchised and the uneducated. So ultimately, I think to counter that, we're going to have to talk to one another. sense of wisdom it's going to be a little tricky yeah. and you got to live life before you can really uh, talk too much about it
The following song is dedicated to the city and people of San Francisco who may not know it, but they are beautiful and so is their city. This is a very personal song, so if you cannot understand it, particularly my friends in Budapest, save up all your bread and fly Translove Airways to San Francisco, USA. Then maybe you'll understand the song. It will be worth it, if not for the sake of this song, but for the sake of your own peace of mind. So, I'll meet you in San Francisco. Or for those of you in Budapest, San Francisco ban találkozunk. Francisco 